welcome back. My name's Jim, this is the Cortina, and previously I've had some problems with the engine. Now I've decided to go EFI on it, and I thought I'd talk about converting a classic engine to EFI, what, what's required to make it run. And to the point where I've written a load of notes. So I'm not gonna go through um, how every sensor and every how an injector works and all this other stuff because there's better videos on that. What I'm talking about is how to basically apply sensors to an engine like the Cortina's pre-cross flow and make it run on fuel injection. Um, so the reason I'm converting it to EFI is because uh, there's potential for more power uh, and torque throughout the rev range, provided obviously it's, it's set up right. Um, so there is going to be some work in that. Um, and the other benefit is that I can keep the original engine, which for a lot of people is very important. Um, good for historic status. And everything that you're applying to the engine can be taken off. So if you needed to go back to carbs and um, points or whatever, you can just go back to it. it what I'm trying to do is a, essentially a bolt-on mod. It's no different to putting twin 40s on or... Um, an electronic distributor and all that other good stuff. So let's get into it. So carb versus EFI. Now in its basic form, this carburetor, 2836 DCD, you open the throttle, air curves through here, through Venturi, you've got um, emulsion tubes and jets and all that good stuff. And depending on the amount of vacuum you pull in, the, set, the settings of the jets in here um, and a few other things that you can change externally, fuel is drawn through and that goes to the four cylinders depending on which one's pulling vacuum at that moment. Um, incidentally, you can get a throttle body that will fit this manifold. It's pretty cool, don't get me wrong, um, but I'm not doing that. What I have opted for are these, which are ITVs off a CBR. Uh, 600 motorbike and it works in a similar way so you'll have sensors that are looking at the engine speed the engine temp uh, the air temp and the amount of vacuum which comes off here so when you open the throttle the amount of throttles recorded at the same time as all those and depending on all those settings and a, a certain amount of fuel will be injected at a certain time and into uh, each cylinder as it's required again so, very simplified view. Now let's go into uh, a little bit more about how we're gonna do that. So what sensors do you need? So in its, again, simplest form, which is what I'm looking for, I'm gonna go for something called an Alpha N setup. So this uses a crank sensor, engine coolant, air temp, throttle position, manifold absolute pressure, and a lambda sensor. So let's have a look into them. How basic on what they do, and how we're going to actually install it. So let's start with the crank sensor. So this is a crank sensor, it's from a Z-Tech, and this is a trigger wheel. Uh, now I've got this with one of the uh, crank pulleys I bought years ago, so I don't know how well it's fitted, but we will get into that. Now you'll see we've got 36 teeth, all the way around here, minus one. And this one is the important one because this tells the engine when you get uh, a gap here in, in the signal, that tells the, uh, the ECU that the engine is at 90 degrees before top dead center on cylinder number, number one. And from that information, it knows roughly, granted all those, all those other settings, but when to fire a spark, when to fire the fuel. Um, so that one is actually real key to uh, to everything else running properly. Um, now, I've got a rough idea I'm going to mount it and the position of things, but I just need to work out some more details, which I'll, I'll show you here uh, as I've drawn it up. Um, I've not used the trigger wheel that I've got in my hand because I'm a bit speculative on how it was fitted, but I am going to use this sensor. Um, but I've got a few ideas on where I'm going to mount it, like I say. Next one is the engine coolant temp. So 
Now that's the, the sender that I've got for the gauge currently. And this works in the same way. So instead of this sending a signal to a gauge which moves a needle, um, this will send um, resistance voltage difference to the ECU and tell it what temperature the engine is. And I'm going to go and use this fitting here because I'll be using a different inlet manifold. I haven't got that water connection and there are sensors that will fit uh, in there because it's a 3.8 NPT thread if I remember rightly. So it'll just literally just bolt in, that's it, easy. It's actually the easiest one of the lot. Now speaking of temperature, also need to know air temperature. Uh, works in a similar way to the coolant, so it's just going to record temperature, send a voltage difference and say at the minute the air coming in is this. And that will be located uh, between the two throttle bodies in an air box. So where I put the either a sausage filter or what I'm thinking is building like a Lotus Cortina style air box and it will go into that. That's useful because it will tell the engine whether the air is coming in is pretty hot or quite cold because then you can adjust the fueling for it and that is going to play a pretty big advantage because of the inlet being on top of the exhaust so there's going to be quite a bit of heat around there which is going to affect the, the air density so that's, uh, that's that one throttle position does exactly what it says on the tin so as you open the throttle and opens up this will move inside and again sends a, a voltage to say at the minute it's so far open um, and that's it really that one's again that one's quite a simple one there's not a huge amount of explanation on it so so next we've got map sensor or manifold absolute pressure uh, it's a bit like the vacuum advance on an old carburetor so as you get vacuum pulled through that would um, affect the timing so it would pull the diaphragm on the distributor and correct the timing similar sort of thing so to get vacuum as I open the throttle and you know send some more air in this there's a sensor that's located on the ECU that will record how much vacuum I'm pulling so it can work out roughly how fast and how much air is entering the cylinder at that time. Um, in the same way on a boosted engine it's looking for pressure so this will do like minus pressure and it'll do positive pressure um, but like I said for, for ITVs it's quite simple because I've got a port per cylinder these hoses all need to join up and then go to the ECU so Again, fairly straightforward, not too stressed on that one. So the last one is the lambda sensor, and that goes in the exhaust after all the cylinders have joined together. So on a 421, like on the Cortina's engine, like this, it goes in here. And I actually welded one in uh, over winter because I was hoping to do some carb tuning uh, this year after I've got the five speed sorted, but unfortunately that's gone to pop. What that's looking for is the amount of that oxygen within the exhaust um, and that can determine whether it's running rich or running lean. Like I say, there's a basic overview on the sensors, but how I'm going to install them. Uh, yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of wiring involved, but I've got an idea on that which I'll come on to um, in a couple of months' time when I actually get around to doing it. First one, ignition. Now the speed we know, which is the ECU I'm going to use, um, can run one coil per cylinder or wasted spark. Now at the minute I'm looking at wasted spark because it's an easier setup. So you use a sing single coil which will fire one and four and two and three at the same time when they need to be fired. Um, the other option I've got are coil packs. Now generally coil packs are used on um, double overhead cam engines they sit at the top so it doesn't really work with an overhead valve but the LS1 um, has coil packs but I'm trying to see whether I can actually get hold of a set of four rather than a set of eight because it's quite expensive really if I'm not going to use half of them 
but that would mean that I can remove the oil distributor. Uh, I do need to check whether the oil pump moves on its own, because I know that I believe it's the Pinto is run off the cam in the same way that the cross flow and the pre-cross flow are, but I think the gears all work together, so I need to make sure that obviously I've still got oil pressure, because that'd be pretty bad if I don't. The next thing is fueling. So this is one of the injectors off the, uh, the bike ITVs. Um, now with Alpha N, these are batch fired, so they all fire. So every time you hit uh, the timing mark on number one, all four of these will fire. And that's okay, because the engine's running so fast that it's not gonna like be wasted fuel, whatever else. So it's kind of like the carburetor. So as when this is open, it doesn't say that the fuel's gotta to go to number one or number four or whatever else. It takes it as the vacuum needs it, and it's kind of the same. Go sequential um, injection, where it goes one, two, four, three. But I'll need to put a, uh, a cam position sensor in. Now, on an overhead valve engine like mine, that's gonna be a bit tricky because the cam drive is in oil, and I just wanna make sure that I can put a sensor in there and not have it leak. So at the minute, I'm leaving it alpha and batch fire it so when we get to number one all four fire simplest way now the next thing with the fuel in which is going to have to change is the actual fuel delivery so at the minute I've got a small fuel pump uh, right next to my tank that pumps through to the carburetor at 4 psi now when it gets to the carb it sits in this bowl here and then it just gets used as required by which point more fuel is being delivered and uh, an injection system slightly different so what you'll have is a fuel rail so all these injectors are connected by a single rail fuels pumped through the same way granted at like 20 30 psi at least um, but it doesn't stay in the fuel rail it'll work its way back round to the fuel tank in a constant loop so what I need is firstly a return line, um, but I also need something in the fuel tank that will hold a small amount of fuel so that the fuel pump's always got fuel ready. So if you're cornering heavily, you're not gonna lose fuel pressure. Whereas on a carb engine, because it's got a little bowl in there, it's not really gonna lose it. So that's something, I have drawn up a fuel tank. Uh, I haven't made it, but yeah, that's the plan. And the last major thing is this, it's, cold, it's for cold start. So what I used to have on the carburetor here is, is the choke, as we all know. So cold morning, pull the choke out, crank the engine for about 20 minutes, and eventually it'll fire, run a bit spluttery, warms up, and then you're off. Whereas um, the intention with this is that it works in the same way. So you've got um, air galleries here so when you open this up it'll allow a little bit of extra air to come through and lean the engine out and warm up but instead of me having to pull a cable the engine knows that the coolant's stone cold and it'll open use this actuator to open the valves and that's it so once it's up to temperature that shuts off um, by which point I'm already on my way and going so that'd be quite a nice thing to have Few, so there are a few optional extras I can use with this as well. First one is um, a coolant fan. Now I do already run an electric fan on this, which is thermostat controlled. There's a probe that goes into the top hose, which I did have a few leaks with it originally, but which I've sorted. But it's nice that I can get rid of that thermostat and I can put a set point in. So when the engine's at a certain temp, the fan will kick in. Uh, I believe I could actually run two smaller fans and have it um, so I've got like a a lower temp where one fan kicks in and then the other kicks in when it's hotter so that could be quite a nice thing particularly if I'm stuck in traffic I've just got a bit of fan and I'm not having to wait till the last second for one fan to kick in uh, the next one is a rev limiter uh, basically stops me damaging the engine by over revving it um, which will be helpful when I start running it in and the 
last one, shift light, because shift lights are cool. And that's kind of it. Like I say, it's a basic look down at what I need to do to get this engine running. Um, I'm going to start making some plans. I've been thinking about this for years, but unfortunately, my ambition outweighed my ability, basically. Um, so at the minute, I'm working on uh, crank position sensor brackets. I'm working on the um, on an inlet manifold, and I'm working on an exhaust manifold, and also the wiring loom and all the other stuff. So I've got quite a bit coming up soon. I'm going to do this as a as a new series. I thought it'd be just separate it out, um, so you don't have to watch all the Cortina stuff that I've done in the past. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll try and answer them. Um, I know it's a bit vague. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy all this and I will see you soon. So thanks for watching. Oh, bloody hell, it's recording.